so excited about Iron Orchid Design's new release of their stamps. Um, the chrysanthemums and the peonies are absolutely gorgeous. And I'm gonna do a project today showing you guys how to use them in kind of an unconventional way. So some of you may have seen the photograph of this project and you've been asking me for a tutorial. So today we're gonna to take time and we're gonna record one. Hi, my name is Royce Hunt Bell, owner and operator of Recycled Treasures. And for today's project, we're gonna use a couple of things. So we'll be using um, a wood blank from Iron Orchid Designs. I'm using eight by tens. I love these wood blanks because they're super um, sturdy and they're made with really good wood. Wood prices are so expensive right now, you guys, and you guys can order these from your stockist, um, and they're not as expensive as the wood you buy at Home Depot nowadays. We'll also be using some salt wash to create texture for our background. We'll be using Iron Orchid Design's um, air dry clay to stamp our flower, and we'll be using these awesome new stamps from Iron Orchid Design. Seriously, you guys, these are so yummy. I just love them. I've already started using them, so they're kind of cut up already. But this one is a chrysanthemum, and you guys see how much um, white space is left in this stamp? It just leaves opportunity for so many things. And so we're gonna use both the chrysanthemums and the peonies. And so I'll show you guys one of the ones um, from the peony. This is the biggest one. Isn't that fabulous, you guys? It is huge. So we won't be using this one today, but it's huge and I love it. But there are some smaller ones. You get leaves and all these pieces um, from this particular product. I am working on a grouping. And so this is the first one that I've created. And then I have done like, you know, a cooking show cheater move um, because I had to have one ready so I can show you guys how to paint it. And so this one I used the chrysanthemum and this one I used the peonies. And so today I want to make the third one with both flowers. So that's the plan. So the first step that we want to do in order to get started is we want to mix together um, some paint. And I'm using Wise Owl's Smoky Quartz. And I'm going to mix it with um, salt wash to create a nice thick um, paste almost that I can spread on my board. I guess I should remove this sticker. Huh? I love using salt wash because I always get the same result every time and um, I know that it's made with safe ingredients so if I sand or something like that I don't have to worry about there being any silicas or anything like that. And salt wash is also a beautiful additive for your paint because it doesn't color, it doesn't change the color of your paint. Do you have to use salt wash? No. You can use a plaster of Paris. Um, I'm looking for a popsicle stick over here. You can use, um, some people use baking soda. So there's different things that you can use to add to your paint to make it thicker. I just love the way salt wash has like um, different size particles in it and so you get this really lovely texture in your paint and yes I'm using my IOD stick to paint this don't tell Josie and Sally and the thing about this mixture is the thicker so I could go ahead and I could try this on my piece like this and it would be perfectly fine but it would take longer for the surface to dry but the piece itself would dry fully faster um, if you're impatient, like I am, then you want to mix more to make a really thick paste because the surface will dry quicker so that you can do your impression. Um, but you're going to have to let your piece probably sit overnight for it to fully dry. So I'm mixing it to the consistency of like, I don't know, drop biscuits, I guess, or maybe cookie dough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cookie dough so we're gonna mix it to the consistency of cookie dough and there are little white particles in there right now and I'm gonna keep mixing until I don't see those anymore because for this project I don't want those to end up um, on my board and so when I'm done my texture is literally about the texture of cookie dough and so let me put that away now for this step, you can use any kind of straight edge 
to spread this on your board, you guys. Um, this is just a really inexpensive scraper that I'm using. But I'm going to take this product and I'm going to drop it on my board. I'm going to drop it all at the same time. And I'm going to spread this across my board. And this is going to be the base for my art piece. And now I'm just going to take my... Um, straight edge and I'm going to just spread this all around. Now when you're spreading this you want to be thoughtful. Um, there are some pieces of your board that just need coverage but there are some pieces where you're going to be actually stamping your flower so you want to make sure that it's thick enough that it's going to capture the detail of your stamp. And so if I had to give a measurement I would say that you want it to be about an eighth of an inch thick. And it will be different across your board, but it doesn't really matter um, because you're, you're, you're not looking for perfection, but you're just looking to add another element of texture to your piece. And so I'm gonna spread that all over my board. Whoops, we don't waste any. Until I get the whole thing covered. Now, you can do different things to create texture on your board. You could take your paintbrush and you could stipple it into this texture if that's what you wanted to have. Um, you could take a small like um, painter's knife and you could run that through there to create a different type of texture. But for the sake of today's project, I want it to look almost like concrete. That's what I'm going for. And so after I'm done spreading this, I'm actually gonna take it and spritz it with some water. And I'm gonna use my straight edge, and I'm gonna almost lay it flat. And have you ever got, have you guys ever seen somebody do concrete? We're just gonna create some really smooth areas. I don't want the whole thing to be smooth. I really only want um, certain portions to be smooth. I'm just creating a different type of texture. So the high areas are smoothed out, but the low areas are still there. And so it just creates a variance, which is gonna give this more interest later. So we're gonna go ahead and set this aside and we're gonna start on the next part of our project. So for this one, for this particular um, board, I wanna use both the peonies and the um, chrysanthemums. So I'm gonna pick some smaller blossoms because I'm gonna have to fit them both on the board. I love this leaf. I think it's gorgeous. I'm gonna use that one. And the leaves don't matter, right? I can use the leaves from either one. But I think that this is gonna be a good size from the peonies to use for this one. Um, and then from the chrysanthemums, I'm thinking that I wanna use this one. I think it's gonna be pretty. And it's just a little bit smaller than that one. And so these are the ones that I'm gonna choose. Whenever I'm using my stamps, you guys, I just cut the backing just like this. And this is how I use them. I essentially use my backing um, as a mount for my stamps. And so that's when I tell you guys to save your plastic when you pull it off the top. It's because you can use them for mounts later on when you're using your stamps. So we're gonna set these aside and out of our way. And I did not grab my baking mat. So I'm gonna use this. Usually I would use um, my baking mat, but I don't know where it is, y'all. So we're just gonna work it out because I've wasted a lot of time already today. So what I'm gonna do to prep this though so that my um, clay doesn't stick is I'm gonna dust this with some um, cornstarch. You guys can see my card over here. I have about everything imaginable. So this is just some cornstarch that I have in here. And this is actually just a wet and wild makeup brush from the Dollar Tree. I love them for doing this because the leaves, the leaves, the bristles are really soft and they just do a really good job of um, spreading out the cornstarch really evenly. So you guys can use your old makeup brushes or you can go to Dollar Tree and find your wet and wild brush for one dollar. So I'm just gonna dust that. And I just, I don't want my clay to stick, right? And so that's why I'm dusting that. I do wanna have an idea of how I'm gonna lay this on my board 
to make sure that these are the ones I want to make. And I think that, I think that this is going to be good. If I do this one this way, I can have this one um, cross over with that one and then I can stamp my leaf here. So we're only going to make, I'm going to do an extra leaf though, I think. Just because I want something off edge. Let me find a smaller leaf. Here we go. We have a smaller leaf. So I think what I'm going to do is um, make the raised portion of my design the floral. And then I'm going to stamp the big leaf. And I'm going to do another raise with one of the leaves. I like having the highs and lows on my board. And so this one we're going to stamp. So we're not going to do that one. So these are the three that we're gonna make right now. So before I start, I dust my stamp really well, you guys. I really don't want my clay to stick to my stamp when I'm working on making my impression. Um, and this brush is really good for just kind of dusting out any extra cornstarch that's in there. And the air dry clay is like perfect for this, you guys. I'm gonna be rolling this out to about an eighth of an inch thick. And my roller has a cheater on it. It has bands on it. I'll show you guys in just a minute. Um, and you guys, you can find these rollers in any baking area in most craft stores. It's not anything like, you know, that you have to get as a specialty item. So for this process, we'll be using a simple rolling pin. You guys will notice that I have these pink rings on either side. Those are to control the depth of um, my clay when I'm rolling it out. And so these particular rings, um, I want to say are an eighth of an inch thick. I'm almost positive that that's the case. And so I am literally just going to roll this out. I think this might be a little too much. Roll this out. When you're rolling your dough, you want to be mindful of how um, the size of your item that you're going to be stamping, right? And the shape of it. So I'm going to roll this and twist it around um, because I don't want it to be one skinny roll because this one has a lot of space and it looks more like a circle. And so I'm going to twist my um, air dry clay around so that I end up with a shape that's similar to the shape of the item I'm going to stamp. starch down because it's sticking just a little bit. If you use a baking mat, you don't have to worry about your mat, your mat slipping around like this one does. But I think that is perfect. You'll know that you're good when your clay stops spreading, right? Because your roller just goes right over it. That means it's the same thickness as the bands on your um, your rolling pin. And so I'm just going to take this and sit it directly over the clay. And I'm going to apply a significant amount of um, pressure, you guys. I really want there to be um, a really clean, distinct impression in my clay so that when I put it on my board, it's very clear what's on there. So I'm applying a significant amount of pressure. I want to go over the entirety of the stamp and make sure that you don't shift the stamp when you're doing this. And then I'm going to lift that up and I end up with this beautiful impression in my clay. Now, in order to maximize this, I'm actually going to go in with the blade and I'm going to fussy cut this out. Um, I know, you guys make fun because I say fussy cut, but I'm using it for everything now because I love it. So I'm actually going to go around the edges with my blade and I'm going to cut this out so that I end up with kind of a clay medallion, basically, that I'm going to be able to glue on to my piece. And so this is going to create the dimension that you see in the other piece. And we're keeping an eye on our um, salt wash 
because we want to wait just until the surface gets dry. But we don't want it to dry out all the way because then we won't be able to press an impression in that salt wash. Isn't that so fun, you guys? Now you have this super cool clay medallion um, that you can glue to your piece. And it still holds the same detail that the stamp has. I'm being really careful because I don't want to stretch it or distort it. Um, use a baking mat, you guys. Don't do as I don't do as I do. Do as I say. But you have this like beautiful um, like clay medallion that you can glue on your piece. So I'm gonna dust this stamp and set this right on top of here and let that hang out. We have another one that we settled on, which was this one. I, th I think it's easier for you guys to actually see when I hold it backwards, right? So it's gonna be the same process. We're gonna dust this one. And I use quite a bit of cornstarch. Like I really do not want my stamp to stick to my clay at all. Um, if it sticks, it pulls up a little bit and you end up with an impression that's not super clean, which if you want more texture on your clay piece, you can do it that way. But I really wanted mine to be super clean. And so that's why I spend a lot of time dusting um, my pieces. So this one's all dusted and ready to go. I'm gonna take some more of my paper clay. Between these two pieces, I should have more than enough for that little bloom. And I'm just going to knead it because I want to get rid of any pockets of air that I put in there um, by folding the cut piece in there. And it's dry to the touch, so I think I'm good to go at this point. So now I have to figure out how I'm going to set this up, right? Um, I'm thinking that if I put this flower here, I can put this flower here and I may cut off a couple of leaves and um, I can put this leaf here and I'll tuck it underneath there and I'll cut that but I'm only doing this so that I can see where I'm going to do the impression of my large leaf. This is a little too linear for me. I think I'm gonna move this one down just a little bit. And so this is why I do that. And you can also use your stamps to figure this out. Um, you don't have to use your actual pieces. And so I can do a, le um, a leaf there, and then I can use this pretty um, leaf, and I can do the impression right here. I think I'm gonna do it this way though. I think I'm gonna do it that way because this one's going this way so I think I want that to go that way and so I'm gonna take these back off and for this portion I'm actually gonna do an impression in the salt wash so I'm gonna take my stamp and dust it really really well and I'm gonna dust it the same reason that I dusted the other ones when I was making the clay medallions I really don't want this to stick to my salt wash, so it's better to put a lot than not enough. And so I'm going to take this, and I decided to go this way, right? And I'm going to sit it down, and I'm going to push it into that clay, into the salt wash, to leave an impression there. I love the highs and the lows of this project. I think it adds a lot of dynamics to this design. And I'm using a significant amount of force, you guys. I really want this to be a nice, clean stamp. And when I spread this, I'm actually getting different depths over the surface of the board. And so some places will actually look different on the leaves than others, but I like that. I'm being really careful not to shift, but to make sure that I get a really nice impression. And then I'm gonna pull straight up. And so I end up with this really cool impression in my board that'll go underneath um, my flower. I think that's gonna be really pretty. So the glue that I prefer to use, um, is um, anything that's like super tacky and it's gonna give me immediate, um, like it's gonna grab immediately to my surface. 
because then I can go on to the rest of my project and not have to wait for it to dry before it starts slipping and sliding. Beautiful. So today I'm going to be using my um, Type Bond Quick and Thick glue, which I forgot to put the lid on. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to put enough glue down there and I'm going to start with my larger bloom first. But first I want to make sure because I'm going to want to make some cuts. So this one is going to go here. Um, we decided where these were going to go. This one was going to go here. I don't want to stack that on top of that. So what I'm going to do is lay um, the larger one on top of the smaller one. And I'm actually going to cut portions of this off. And the way that I'm going to tell what I'm going to cut off is I'm literally going to trace around the edge of this one so that I know exactly what I need to remove from this bloom to make it work. Once I've made my marks on there, then I can lay this one over and remove the portions that I've cut off of this one. And now when I laid my flower down, they match perfectly. Love it. And I'm gonna have to do the same thing with my leaf for this flower. So I'm gonna put my leaf underneath this flower and make sure it's where I want it to be. And then I'm gonna make the cuts on my leaf. And this cuts out any guesswork, you guys. Now I know exactly where um, my leaf needs to lie. And I may even, I think I'm gonna, so this feels unbalanced to me. It's really heavy um, here on the bottom and then there's nothing here. So I'm just gonna take this really um, small leaf and I'm gonna dust it really well. And I'm just gonna stamp it right here. I'm gonna lift this leaf up though so that it can start there. And we'll see, this is pretty dry, so even if we don't get a really deep impression, just um, having that there is really gonna help balance this composition of some. And no matter how well I plan, sometimes I just have to actually see the composition before I can make final decisions. And I think that looks a lot better, right? So, um, now to glue, ah! to glue my pieces together. You can use a brush, but I just use my fingers. So, I don't wanna move my pieces around too much because they're exactly where I want them to be. So I'm gonna spread glue underneath um, the flowers. I don't have to worry about like gluing it perfectly, you guys. As long as it's tacked down on the surface, it's fine. So it's not like it's gonna be for a piece of furniture or something that's gonna see a lot of action where I wanna make sure that everything is tacked down really well because I don't want it to move. This is gonna hang on a wall somewhere. Um, and so I'm trying to glue it, but it's not like you want you have to get glue over like every single inch. As long as you get a decent coat over the whole thing, you're fine. And honestly, I don't like getting glue that oozes out of the edges either. So that's why I don't like using a ton of glue. So I'm just gonna tack that down and that bloom is good to go. Isn't that fabulous, you guys? So this is the end of this portion of the tutorial. But you guys, I'm gonna do a second part and I'm gonna show you how I finish this off and how we paint it to make it look absolutely fabulous. So be sure and click over to part two to find out how to finish this project. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Again, my name is Royce Hunt Bell, owner and operator of Roycycled Treasures. 
you can find me at www.recycled.com. Um, make sure you guys click and subscribe. And if you hit the bell, then you'll make sure that you're alerted when we upload new videos. And if you give me a thumbs up, you guys, it will help push it out. So we can share more crafting with more people. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Have a good day. We'll see you next time.